Hey guys, we're Ian and Anna, and we shipped our van from the US all the way to Europe. And in today's video, we want to just talk about what it's been like the past four months for us. So let's just jump right in. So I feel like our first impressions talking about Europe are going to have some comparisons to the US just naturally because yeah. that's the only other place we've done van life. First and foremost, the most surprising thing is how doable van life is and welcoming it is in Europe. I didn't realize that was gonna be more difficult, Yeah. but this continent is really built for van life and you will see that when you're here. There's so many RVers, so many van lifers. I think we thought it was gonna be much more difficult. Americans coming over to Europe to do van life but it's built for especially with apps now we use park for night app to find either wild camping so free campsites or paid for campsites and i will say we've been staying at majority of the time paid for campsites and they have been priced from 10 usd all the way up to 50 usd so it just depends which countries you're growing in of course portugal was a little bit cheaper and then we went to switzerland and it was around 45 dollars a night but it's worth it for that country that's for sure i also think we should mention that in the u.s we had a very small van and we didn't have any income and we were like trying to build this YouTube dream and now things are a lot different. You know, we see staying at campsites as an investment for our comfort so we can produce videos for you guys. To be honest with you, of course, because we've been staying at campsites, we have showers, dishes. You don't have to worry so much about the little things in the van. That being said, we've definitely enjoyed European van life much more. I think getting the taste of the cheaper campsites in Portugal made us be like, all right, we're probably gonna mostly stay at paid for campsites unless we're doing something very adventurous. Yes. But there are countries like Switzerland where you can't free park anywhere, but you can get away with paying for parking overnight in parking lots and sleeping there. You will not have access to water, showers, bathrooms though, if you do it that way. That's called stealth camping. You kind of just stay in your vehicle. No one's going to bother you. Like police won't even knock on your doors, but you do need to pay for the you night. Do have to it's pay super for the cheap night. though, like eight bucks. They for have apps. Night. Everything is so easy nowadays. The best thing for Americans or anyone coming to Europe to really enjoy a country to the fullest. You could rent a camper van from a lot of different companies. I know Indie Campers has vans, Roadsurfer.com has vans, and it sometimes comes out to be cheaper because you can go with your friends and you could even have some tents for your friends outside your van and then also have a bed inside. So there's a lot of opportunities there for everyone. Next thing, let's talk about roads and driving from country to country. There's a few things about the roads. They have a standard for their highways and to be in the EU, you need to have these nice roads. Yes. So if you're in the EU, every Everything is very nice, easy. However, you need to pay to maintain these roads. So when we drove through the entirety of France, just the tolls alone were $150 oh. from north to south, which is like crazy. It's just something to keep in mind. Oh. We're currently in Serbia, my family's village. This is Archie, one of my uncle's dogs. So when we crossed into Serbia, they have really great highways here. However, in the back countries, the roads are awful. You will come across bad roads in the Eastern Europe countries for sure. Sure. It's not like a big deal. I just get worried about flat tires and then everything's always shaking in the van. So it can be like, ah, I hope nothing breaks. The second thing I want to talk about with roads, this is more for American. So many people message me on Instagram and they're like, how is it driving on the wrong side of the road? Now, I don't want to sound ignorant and say that every country in Europe drives on the right side of the road, but let's just say the majority, like at least 90%. And finally, every single person was so nervous for us to drive in small, streets and there has been four incidences where I've had to get out of the car and make sure Ian can get through a side street in a city. However, when you're doing van life, you're really spending a lot of time in nature. Like you're not trying to go to Rome with your van yeah. and camp. Even in Porto, we went to a campsite 30 minutes away and just took Ubers into the city. If we're going to keep doing that, like going into cities, we'll probably just leave the van outside the city and get Airbnbs inside. It's not worth it. It's really hard to maintain in a city. So it's really not something to think about at all because you're going to be spending more time in nature where van life is more compatible. The first time we entered Serbia is the only time we had to go to border control. Except for Switzerland. That's Switzerland right. and Serbia were border control. They kind of just look at your documentation of the van, make sure you have insurance for the van. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But those countries, of course, they're outside the EU. For example, we dropped off our van in Antwerp, Belgium, and we went through France, Spain, Portugal, Italy, all throughout these countries. You just go through the borders. 
no questions asked. It's exactly like the United States where you go from state to state, which was amazing. And I didn't realize that until we shipped our van over here. I think that the EU, the European Union, is really trying to make the United States of Europe. Yes. Really, that's like essentially what it is. So you can go from country to country and have the same groceries. There's little Aldi, like common maxis throughout all of these countries. Yes. Another thing I like about the EU, for us at least, is that it goes with the Euro. So you just have one currency throughout all these countries. But when you go to Switzerland, you got Swiss franc. Mm -hmm. And then when you come to Serbia, you got dinar. So that's different types of currencies. Of course, the Americans like traveling yeah, through know. the EU because we're so lazy. We're not that lazy. It's no, just, who doesn't like that? I don't it, I don't know if Europeans like the EU or whatnot. Yeah, we're not getting into like maybe the, down the, the politics comments. side of yeah, it. Comments you can respond about that. Yeah. The next thing we want to talk about is the Schengen zone. So we're comparing the EU a lot to the US, but there's this zone. It's very crazy. And you can be in the EU and be in the zone, but you can also not be in the EU and be in the Schengen zone. So you actually have to go on Google and look up which countries are Schengen zone countries. For example, Switzerland is not in the EU, but it is in this Schengen zone. As Americans, we only have 90 days to be in the zone, and then you actually have to leave for 90 days. So in 180 days, you can only spend 90 in the Schengen zone. That's one of the reasons we're here in Serbia taking a break right now, because this is not in the zone so we were so fine to leave and post up in Serbia where my family is and take a proper break you know we're just really tired and we need to catch up on videos we've also had a lot of people make fun of us like I can't believe you're taking that seriously no one can really check <laughs> but the thing is if you get caught you're like banned from Europe we're banned from Schengen zone countries, which it's 27 countries. You don't want to be banned from those countries. But let's talk about car insurance and travel insurance. So for travel insurance, for like health problems, or if we get in a wreck and we get a broken arm or something, we use Safety Wing. We've used them all over the world. You just put your country in, it's really affordable. And then for car insurance, we use a third party liability. That's what you need to have if you want to bring a vehicle or drive throughout Europe in general. I will have that link down below the company we use. Only some of them will do American vehicles. It just depends. That's why I'll just link the one we use for the past four months over here. But when we come to places like Eastern Europe, a lot of those car insurance companies don't cover this region because of high crime. So you do need to get your own car insurance within this country. Luckily enough, my cousin works for a car insurance company. So we were able to get it for the van for a month and yeah, worked out for us. Only third party. It's not comprehensive. To get comprehensive, you have to pay a ton. And I think I'm going to look into that more. But thankfully, we didn't get in a crash. So third party only takes care of the other person's vehicle in a crash. If you get in a crash, your vehicle is not covered, the repairs and stuff. But for comprehensive, that would take care of the other person's vehicle and your vehicle. So another first impression in Europe is the freaking gas. Now, you, we knew it was gonna be bad, but we didn't get a diesel van because diesel in the US is much more expensive than petrol, but in Europe, it's the other way around. So we were laughing at ourselves like, God bless it. On average, the gas has been $7.50 a gallon. To put it into perspective, in Charlotte, North Carolina, Yeah. $65 to fill up our gas. Yes. Here in Europe, it's been $180, so it's pretty much triple. It's aggressive gas. when we have to uh, fill up the gas tank, but that's our biggest expense. While campsites over in Europe have been cheaper than they are in the US. The next thing we want to talk about is safety. Thank God no one has broken into the van yet. We have seen one other van lifer do van life in Europe and they got broken into. Now, I remember watching their YouTube video about it and they said they left all their things out charging. Ian and I have never left our van with our things out. We kind of take all of our expensive stuff out of the van, like yeah. camera gear, when we're traveling anyway, since we're filming. So I just want you guys to know, if you leave your van, definitely put everything away. Theft is the only thing we've been worried about in Europe. We get worried about that stuff in the US too. Like San Yeah, Francisco. of course, yeah. But we have never felt more safe doing van life yes. over here. The campsites are so secure. Even wild camping, you just feel like you're the only one in the world on like the Portugal coast. And it doesn't feel like anyone's watching Watching you no one wants to hurt yeah you. even in these Balkan countries I think Eastern Europe has a little bit more gruff representation and media but we've never been treated more kindly locals love seeing American van rolling through and it's just yeah. been a great experience overall yeah and I think that something that's huge is just not having guns because that fear always came into my head yes. in the middle of the night when we were in the US there's not guns here so well, actually something we learned in Serbia, Serbia does have guns <laughs> okay the other European impression is getting 
and you experience culture. One of the best things about Europe is the food oh. and driving from country to country. We started with like French baguettes. We had Belgian waffles. Oh my we, God, wait, I forgot about that. Yeah. Like our road trip snack was a baguette with fresh jam and meats oh. and cheeses, like a charcuterie board. And the gas station baguettes and salami are the highest quality. It's crazy. And then you can go down to Portugal and get some of the best food and over to Spain. And then now we're in Serbia, which the Balkan food My is- My favorite. Our favorite. It's the best, most <laughs> underrated food in the world. I so know. <laughs> it's just the food, the people, the cultures, yeah. and the vibes are all there. It's exactly like in the US. You don't really know what you have until you go out there and explore. You have so much. It's like saying, oh, the US, the New York City, Miami. No, there's like all these little hallmark towns and there's so much to it. And that's exactly how Europe is. It's an onion. There's layers and layers oh, and layers and layers. Best. I like that track. Yes, it is an onion. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about our plans going forward. So after Serbia right now, we're going to take the van through Croatia, Slovenia, and then do Dolomites and a little bit of Italy. And then in November, mid-November, we're going to drive back here and leave it in the village while we go back and celebrate Thanksgiving back in the US, Christmas. Sorry if I'm like zoning out. You're so tired because like why? Oh, I'm tired because we found three kittens and we also found their dead mom. And we took it upon ourselves to take care of them because people in the village have enough going on. They're probably four to five weeks old. We're not sure yet, which yes. means they need a lot more care since their mom's gone. You have to feed them every four hours and give them water. So we wake up in the middle of the night, but this is why you should definitely follow us on Instagram because you would see like the updates of the live action of what's going on in our lives. Also with you guys following this entire journey, I want you guys to be down in the comments giving tips helping others that want to live this lifestyle or do van life in Europe and also telling us where you want us to visit I know we're doing Norway next year which is very exciting it's some place we've dreamed of doing van life but if there's any countries or places you would want to show us we love having locals show us around it's definitely the best way to travel so let us know down there and also you could always message us on Instagram we got to get back to Belgrade because we're actually gonna take the kitties to a vet yes. in Valjevo and get them some supplies at the pet store and then we are gonna go to Belgrade and just nurse them until we get back here. Yeah, Anna's brother is coming in a couple in a week. Yeah, so be that'll great. be so fun. We'll uh, keep trying to catch you up on things. We like to make these videos to help others and make sure to subscribe, like, comment always. It really helps our videos get pushed out. Thanks for supporting <laughs> us. Yeah. See ya. Woo woo.